Bleak House by Charles Dickens Chapter One In Chancery London Michaelmas term lately over, and the Lord Chancellor sitting in Lincoln's Inn Hall. Implacable November weather. As much mud in the streets as if the waters had but newly retired from the face of the earth, and it would not be wonderful to meet a megalosaurus forty feet long or so, waddling like an elephantine lizard up Holborn Hill. Smoke lowering down from chimney pots, making a soft black drizzle with flakes of soot in it as big as full grown snowflakes. Gone into mourning, one might imagine, for the death of the sun. Dogs indistinguishable in mire. Horses, scarcely better, splashed to their very blinkers. Foot passengers jostling one another's umbrellas in a general infection of ill temper, and losing their foothold at street corners where tens of thousands of other foot passengers have been slipping and sliding since the day broke, if this day ever broke, adding new deposits to the crust upon crust of mud, sticking at those points tenaciously to the pavement and accumulating at compound interest. Fog everywhere, fog up the river where it flows among green eights and meadows, fog down the river where it rolls defiled among the tiers of shipping and the waterside pollutions of a great and dirty city. Fog on the Essex marshes, fog on the Kentish heights, fog creeping into the cabooses of collier brigs, fog lying out on the yards and hovering in the rigging of great ships, fog drooping on the gunnels of barges and small boats, Fog in the eyes and throats of ancient Greenwich pensioners, wheezing by the firesides of their wards. Fog in the stem and bowl of the afternoon pipe of the wrathful skipper down in his close cabin. Fog cruelly pinching the toes and fingers of his shivering little prentice boy on deck. Chance people on the bridges, peeping over the parapets into a nether sky of fog, with fog all round them, as if they were up in a balloon and hanging in the misty clouds. Never can there come fog too thick, never can there come mud and mire too deep, to assault with the groping and floundering condition which this High Court of Chancery, most pestilent of hoary sinners, holds this day in the sight of heaven and earth. <laughs>